So are you ready for your first storyteller of the evening? All right. So our first speaker is a 24-year-old front-ender and team lead. He recently wrapped up a software engineering master's degree and for him, breathing clean air is a human right that everyone deserves. Please welcome our first speaker, Gorian Yoronovsky. This is a pickle jar. But this is a present for my parents back home in Macedonia. Now, before any of you go online to start an Indiegogo campaign to crowdfund pickles for Macedonia, I can assure you we're fine on that subject because this holds something much more valuable than pickles. This holds clean air. When I was 15, back in my hometown of Skopje, during our cold and groggy winters, I was forced to stay indoors and not open any windows or doors of my house, not because we are afraid to let the heat escape, but because we didn't want to let the so-called smelly fog enter inside. This is a picture of Skopje, my home city, covered in this smelly fog. And I can assure you, the city is underneath that, but you just can't see it. Now, my parents said, this is a very weird phenomenon, but our country has always been like this. Summer will come and, and this will all go away, so don't wrap your head too much around it. And I didn't, until three years ago, when a seemingly unimportant pile of data changed my life and transformed my country. Data is written within Booking's DNA. I mean, one of our core values is to be data-driven. We collect it, we love it, we cherish it. Data is the reasoning behind all of our decisions and why we're all here today. But data is also a very scary, massive pile of information. And wrapping your head around it is not a test to be underestimated. <clears throat> Being a bored 21-year-old college student back in Macedonia, forced to stay indoors during winter because of the smelly fog, I was looking for new ideas for projects. Browsing online, I stumbled upon a little government website which featured open data sets. As I riffled through the titles, I stumbled across one of them which is named Air Pollution Dataset. Being the geek that I am, I quickly type up an algorithm to kind of process this data, to tell me, what does this data hold? But there was this very annoying bug in my algorithm. I, I just couldn't take it out of it. it. It kept displaying me weirdly large numbers. I mean, it was telling me air pollution in Macedonia was like 20 times over the EU limit. It, it, it was saying four times over Beijing. I mean, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's unrealistic. But, but it's true my algorithm didn't have a bug. This was not fog, this was smog. My country, my motherland was suffocating from an invisible enemy. But why wasn't anyone talking about this? I mean, this, this data was public, it was out there. But where, where, where are the news stories? Where are people on social media? Where are people protesting on the streets? Silence. What I learned that day was very logical, but very powerful. The data was out there and it was telling a horrific story. But because it was being presented to the public in a very confusing and incomprehensible way, for the average user, it was not adding any value. On the contrary, it was being overlooked. I couldn't stand by and watch this happen to my motherland. I took it upon myself to find a way of presenting this data to my fellow citizens in a way that's not only informative, but empowers them to act. My response to the problem was Moy Vozduch, or My Air, a mobile app which features this open data, takes it from its raw format, and transforms it 
into something much simpler, which people can now understand. It has the raw data and the numbers, but it's also being backed up by visuals, like progress bars, like calendars, and like charts. Taking that message from a very complex and incomprehensible form and delivering it in a more simple and understandable way. The public's reaction to the app was amazing. After only one month it being out there, more than one million people had accessed this data, either from the mobile app, the web app, or simply by following the news, which were finally catching on to the problem. People were shocked. They were skeptical. Some even said I was lying. We, we had the then Minister of Ecology go on TV and say, you know, don't trust Gorian, don't, don't trust Moy Vozdu, he's, he's lying, he's being paid by the Americans and by Soros to do this and spread controversy. It's like an angry little child with a napkin. And <laughs> I go back on TV and I give a counter statement and say, well, Minister, let me give you a, let me give you a, a proposal. How about you and me, we, we sit down on a table in front of the media you open up your government website on your laptop and I'll open my app on my phone. And we'll compare this data. If the data differs, then I'll shut down my Vozdu, I'll, I'll burn the servers, I'll force Git push to the repo. But if the data's the same, then you resign. Guess who was never heard from again? <laughs> that winter, people were very unhappy and nervous because of the government's unwillingness to do anything about this problem. We took to the streets of the five biggest cities in Macedonia, protesting, trying to raise awareness of the problem. This is me in front of the government building, 30 seconds before I start to throw eggs at it. No wonder why they wanted to arrest me. This is even one of our politicians waving screenshots of the app in parliament trying to raise awareness to his colleagues that this is no longer a political issue, nor a gender issue, nor a racial issue. What unites all of us within this is that we all breathe the same air. There's no escape from it. We even had scientists coming down from Sweden to do analysis on this data. And what they found out was that more than 1,300 deaths yearly are directly attributed to air pollution. Let me ask you this. With a raise of hands, how many of you this past week have checked Bowen Alarm or Bowen Radar for, for, for rain or any one of these apps for rain by the raise of hands? Now, keeping your hands up, look around at your colleagues. Imagine that if all of us here were living in Macedonia today, we wouldn't be checking our apps for rain. We would be checking Moy Vozdu to know if the air outside is even safe for us to leave our homes. Let that sink in. Looking back at this surreal journey, I understood that it takes three things to transform raw data to a finished product. Initially, you have to understand what data you have on your hands. What does it mean? What message is it trying to tell you? For me, I looked online and I read scientific literature to understand what these metrics and numbers were telling me. And then I read law literature to understand how we and these numbers are correlating to the EU limits we are supposedly following. After you understand your data, you need to understand your audience. Why are they not understanding the data that you're delivering to them. Is it confusing? Is it in an incomprehensible format? Or is it simply not even there? Once you know all of these, put them together. Create your product, create the message that you wish to deliver to your users. Take them by the hand and lead them to the message. Show them the value of what you're having. Booking.com is moving at an ever-increasing rate to new markets and new fields of operation. And now, more than ever before, we need to find ways of displaying all of this data that we have to our customers and to our partners to not only inform them, but empower them to have 
the best experience on the world's most awesome travel website. Think about this when you go back to your desks tomorrow. Because just maybe you and your team have this data which is needed to transform booking the way that I'm transforming Macedonia. As for me, my fight is far from over. During my winter holidays, I will be back in Macedonia, shoulder to shoulder with more than 3,000 of my fellow activists protesting and fighting a war against an invisible enemy. There is progress made, but there's still a long way to go until we can literally say that we can breathe at ease. Honestly, I look forward to the day when in this jar, I can actually put pickles instead of clean air, because then I will definitely know that my country is safe. Thank you. What a start, Dorian. Fantastic talk, really inspiring, and you've, you've got a call to action you'd, you'd like to share with everyone here today. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. The way that booking is changing the world for the better and allowing all of our people to travel anywhere they want is amazing. You people are movers of the world. I would ask that now you become movers of Macedonia. Help our country and help us get the air that we so desperately need if we can have this slide, take your phones out right now and take a picture of this slide. Share it on social media, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram. Use this hashtag to let the Macedonian government know that people are watching, people know that this is happening and that it is a human right for everyone to breathe clean air. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs>